Hey, I just want to do a little tutorial on getting your 2D drawings into Blender. I did some older ones, but I think uh, I have more knowledge now to try to optimize it a bit. So I have a drawing here that I did a couple days ago, and I've prepped it, and I've tried to keep the transparency within the bounds. And there's a rogue pixel here, but that's, that's okay for this purpose here. And we're going to save this as a PNG. Now, there are other things that once I've taken it into Blender, we can use to mask certain things out. I'll just start prepping it here just to show you. So let's just say, for example, I am going to create a new layer. And let's just say I want, I'm going to create a mask here. We want this to be whoop, fully at red. And so what that is, if I bring this over here, I have two screens, red is at 255, what is at zero, we want the pure red, and that means that I want this gun to be, I want to mat out this gun. I'm sure there are easier ways to do this, but let me just actually pause the video and mat it out. Okay, so I've matted it out, and I've just decided that I want her eyes and some bits on her armor to glow, and the red's gonna be the metallic properties. So I'm just gonna save this out. It'll make sense once I've imported it in. I'm just gonna save this as a PNG and mat. Keep it nice, shooter. Oops, completely spell it all wrong. Shooter. Okay, save that out. Fantastic. Now let's go over into Blender here. I've already set this up. And I just want to show you the differences when importing things in. So currently there are an emission and principled. So there's a handy add-on when you hit shift A, uh, you can go into image and import the images as planes. If you don't have this, you can access it if you go into edit preferences and you can look it up in the add-ons search for image as planes. So when we add an image we're granted we're uh, presented with a bunch of options here it's gonna import this one here principled which is what I showed you uh, and that takes in lighting information we also have emit which is just the emission base and shadeless um, as you can see here only visible to the camera and reflections uh, and down here with the offset planes this is where it's going to be in relation to the camera or sorry to the world so if you have like a background and you want to do multi-planing this would be fantastic as well as setting up the images the orientation or the way it's going to be facing is also handy here so i'm just going to import this as is because i just need the information and it's going to delete this because it just brought in and so there was also two things i wanted to show too once we import these in uh they are by default alpha blend now what does that mean well it means that we can do gradients you can see here i have it as alpha clip and i'll show you the reason why so i'm just going to switch this both to alpha blend and the default would be opaque for both of these as well so we're just going to do that opaque opaque and i have this as an alpha blend so watch what happens when i rotate the camera did you see that this pops this is supposed to be underneath the plane, but it's in front and there's some weird errors and artifacting. Let's see what happens here. Did you see like also here? The reason for that is like this multiple alphas and they're trying to blend in between the two and it's just having a hard time understanding what to do with the gradients. And this can cause a lot of errors, but it's great in certain instances. If you only have very few alphas uh, and gradients or flat-ons, I find it's useful for this. But if you're importing drawings in and you're trying to establish them within your 3D world, it's much better to use alpha blend or alpha hashed. So let's see what happens. If we go into the settings, here I have my settings here. I've named it hilariously. Uh, so this is the materials. Access with this orb here with a checkered. Go to the settings, switch alpha blend to alpha clip. And now you can see it's uh, making sense because it's in the world. We'll do the same thing here, alpha blend to alpha clip. And now that makes way more sense. However, if you notice something odd, we have this square here. What happens if we want to use the cutout to drive the shadow? Well, we can do that in the same settings, settings, shadow mode, alpha clip. We'll do the same thing here, 
settings, shader, alpha clip. And now, and now it works. It takes a moment to update. And there is some really ugly artifacting because I think this is uh, artifacting like this. There are ways to try and calm it down. We can use a clip threshold. You can see what's happening here. It's like really calming it down. If we switch to alpha hashed, it's kind of like dittering it a bit. Uh, so let's go back to alpha clip and bring this like that. And I think if we do that with the shadow, will that be a bit better? It's also the shadow resolution might be a little too low. There we go. We'll just bump these things up a bit. Okay, so that's what we have here. We're pretty much done in terms of importing our drawing in. Now, if you have an image sequence, it will pick it up and you can set the frames of how many uh, frames there is and you can play the sequence. I'll do that in another video. So we have this here. What else can we do? Well, I did show you that I created a mat and I can import that in and we can have some fun with it. One thing to note also, it just reminded by looking at this here, when you import it in an image as a principal BSDF, it'll be kind of shiny like this and that's because of the specular setting. It may not be desirable in some cases, like for me, it's not desirable here. So I'll just bump that all the way down and bump the roughness up. So we can still take in light information. If we can go around and we can change the lighting, and it affects this character. And I think this is a really fantastic way to really bring some life into your drawings if you need like really fast iterations or seeing different lighting scenarios. Like if you have a whole background and you just import all the planes and information in, then you can like quickly iterate and light and get some really cool references. Granted, you'll need a normal map if you want to have forums here. And that's something I might show a little later on once I've figured out a good workflow because it stands, it's a little convoluted, but it's super exciting. It's something I've been doing with uh, Tonico and some other friends lately. Okay, so what can we do? Well, remember that mask I created? It's this one right here. Let me just drag this down and show you the image itself. And this one here, where let's say I want her eyes that are in the green mat to glow, and this is some other bits here. I'll just dictate the glow. And this red, we can have it metallic. So how do we do that? Because if we plug this just in, that just shows this. That's very undesirable. But if we plug this in here, I'll kind of matter out like that. Mm, still not what we're looking for. Well, the thing is, we're just using the, this information to cut down the number of images and masks we need. Rather than having two masks, I need one. And so what we can do is use a node called a split RGB, or separate, sorry, RGB. So now if I plug this image here, it separated them into three channels. So I can access the red like that. You can see it's, there's no green selected. If I click the green, that's selected. That's very desirable. That's what I wanted. Okay, so what can I do now? Well, the red is where the gun in this metallic bit is and the metallic shader is right here. So if I just plug the red into the metallic, it may be hard to see because of our roughness, but let me lower the roughness here. You can see the red and the gun, oh sorry, the canister and the gun are now taking metallic information in. And just to make it even more evident, Let's create another shader for the bloom bits here. So let's go into bloom, enable this, and you can see the gun and the canister are blooming right now. Okay, let's move this back. Let's move this up here, move this here, and let's create an emission. And we'll need a mix RGB, and we'll use the green into our mask, because this is what it's going to look like. If we bring this up, and bring this down. This is the color for our mask. This is what I want. So I'll plug this into color and I'm going to mix the shade. We can also use an add shader, uh, which I think would be better for this instance. So let's plug in principal and emission. And the reason why I say add shader is better is because we're just using an emission. We can use something called a mix uh, shader, but we need to add the factor here, which then we just drag this in and Anyway, there's, there's a whole other thing with this. 
I just wanted, to, I know for this instance that it's gonna be glowing, so I think add shader would be much better. So we just plug this in, and now look at that. I mean, if our eyes glowing, these things glowing. And we can like increase the strength like this. We can change the color to anything we want here. And look at that. We're now starting to kind of like comp our drawing. And we can control this and we can keyframe this too. So if you want her eyes like pulsate a bit, we can do that. So let's see, we start at zero. And we could insert keyframes like this. And we could say like, oh, maybe at the 10th keyframe, I have to click on this so you can see, five or let's say 10, 15. I'm just looking at the glow right now, insert keyframe, and then it kind of stops at here, zero, insert keyframe, and I kind of want it to bounce, I hit T, click the keyframe, this, a lot of these dynamic effects, and now, shift E, make cyclic, a cyclic. Now we have her eyes glowing, we have a metallic shader, look at that. Um, I'm also, I can also use a library called material link and I can throw in an HDR map around. Let me just delete this here and let me summon some materials here so we can have fun with this. So let us see here. I mean, this is a wonderful add on and I definitely recommend it if you want like a really professional library. So I'm just going to summon some concrete and this looks great here. So I'll summon that, I'll pop it in and voila so there's also some fun funny things like it's as you can see here her foot is angled because i drew this in perspective but eh, you can get around with this you know you can like kind of cheat things like this and increase this up like that maybe she's on a step or something and then uh let's add this bring this up bring this forward up all right so there we go. Let's add in that HDR mapping. So we're gonna go to the world, and I'm just gonna summon something here. Uh, let's try this. Summon selected. And now we have this. You can kind of see too, like it's reflecting the environment. So if you had like a 2D drawing, it will reflect and hit this and the gun. Uh, let me see if I actually do have a 2D drawing uh, background somewhere. Do I have one? <laughs> let me think. Let me think. I'm going to pause the video and look for one. Alright, I did find one. And now this isn't an HDR, so the color information might be a little weird, but it just provides a really cool looking background or abstract background, just to show you what else you can do. And now this node setup comes from material, material leak. I don't know if I'm saying that right, so I can like kind of manipulate the way this looks. I'm trying to get different lighting scenarios. Like you can see the metallic nicely reflecting here, like that. And let's see what else we can add. What else can we add? Ambient occlusion, screen space, screen space reflections. That looks really nice. Refraction, if we have any. Uh, depth of field, we could probably add a little bit more. But yeah, this is like just a cool setup. Uh, one other cool thing you can do as well is like, you can, like I mentioned before, we can keyframe anything. We can actually keyframe her changing her eye color as well. So let's say we wanted to start with, uh, yeah, sure, we'll start with this, insert keyframe, and by the time it hits 20, maybe it goes like this insert keyframe and then we want to return and ease back to the orange AA to select everything shift E make cyclic and there we go and you can see what's happening here I really like this look I think it's such a, a striking look to combine 2d and 3d like I find this is a great marriage finally because uh, what I, I find often is why can't 3d just be good at being 3d and 2d be good at being 2d there's always this thing where we need, we're trying to replicate 3d to look like 2d and 2d to look like 3d they both have their own strengths and you just have to like create a link between them um you know 
make it stylized and see what it is. Sure, it, it depends on the aesthetics, but I don't see it often enough where you combine the best of both worlds and just merge them together. Just like, yes, this is a 3D world. This is, we're not trying to hide what it is, or this is 2D, we're not trying to hide what it is. And you start mixing it and molding it and become something else where now you've taught the audience, is this 3D, is this 2D? It confuses them, and that's maybe appealing to my <laughs> trolling nature. It's like, I don't know, I'm not gonna tell you what it is. And I think that's the best thing, is, uh, is I like to look at something and not know how they made it and just be like amazed and mesmerized. Uh, okay, so we have this. Um, we could like we can do some more fun things with this. So let's say if we just add a slight color variation there, we can just start throwing lights left and right, like the area light here, and just like thin this out slightly, make it like that. Whoops. Over here, change the color. That. Bring this over here. Bring this down. Change this to something else. Rotate this slightly like this. And maybe put a point light here, maybe behind. And change this color to something else. I really like that shadow, so we can play around with that. Like that. And let's just hide everything. Let's put a camera in place. Let's put an empty in the middle here. So you can see here, QQ, rename, focus. And so we're gonna drive our depth of field. And we're gonna focus on focus. And we can like change the aperture. And there we go. We can also try and clean this clip up a bit here. There we go, it's a bit cleaner now. Um, yeah, so that's how you gotta compose things. Like within blend, oh, you can see it's kind of eating things away a little too much now. I think that's something I have to like look into is like cleaning this up because we had alpha blend. You can see that the depth of field is having a hard time trying to hit that. Alpha hash might be the best bet. I'll be good there. Okay, so yeah, um, what I was gonna say. Oh yeah, we can change color. We can start editing things too. Since this is a node setup, this is a granted a, a texture. We can go in and you know change the hue like this. But we can also do fun things now. Since I've created this mask here, let's say what if I am like you know what I really don't like the color of the gun. And I know the red is here, so if I go and use a hue, saturation, the factor is this, put this in here, factor is just basically the mask, and now you can see I can just change this and it'll just change the gun and the canister color. There you go. Very dazzling. Uh, yeah, I think that's... That's about it. Key things to remember again is alpha blend doesn't really play nice if you have depth of field and if there are multiple alpha blends in the object. So make sure to go into settings, blend mode, alpha clip, alpha hashed. If you want the cutout of the shadow to happen, not just a plane, use alpha uh, clip. When you're preparing it, remember to have a transparency and alpha and remember to try and crop it to the bounds of the image because if this was the whole size and let's say if this character was on a canvas of 8,000 by 6,000, just random numbers there. And if you have frames with it, it's going to really bog it down a lot. Uh, when you import it in, there are options to consider. Principle takes in the shader information. Emission is just like a light, so it doesn't take any, any information. Uh, yeah, happy experimenting.